In this episode of Cars Plus, our second in the series of assembling a Graham non-supercharged engine, the type built between 1938 and 1940. We're going to show you bearing modifications as you're seeing in the background right now, as well as a whole series of individual assembly steps and suggestions and pointers. Stay tuned. the underside of this car's engine, the 1939 Gram we're restoring for a customer. And one of the things you see immediately is it's full of cotter pins. They're not supposed to be cotter pins. Those bolts are supposed to be safety wired. But that's not the only interesting thing you see here. As you move across and we come to the oil pump, there's no safety wiring on the oil pump at all. So that's another thing we're noticing that's particularly wrong. But let's look at some more things. Coming along, you'll see massive amounts of silicone in use. It's not how to install things, and believe it or not, they put gasket paper over the ends at the end, each end of the crankshaft. That all has to be changed and done properly. When we drained the oil out of this, it was super thin. Also not a good indication. We've got all the valve lifters in here. It's time to install our camshaft. There are one, two, three, four bearings for the camshaft. At the front of the engine is the largest, back of the engine is the smallest. As we slide the cam in from the front, we have to rotate it sometimes so we don't end up running into the bearing surfaces and damaging things. So be sure to do that very carefully. We're going to coat each one of the bearing surfaces with our assembly lube. Just using an acid brush to do it. We're going around the inside of each one of these bearings. So we've got assembly lube on everything. Okay, they're all looped up. Now we'll install the camshaft. Come in from the end. As I said, you have to carefully work your way past things. because now we're into our third bearing over. And we're rotating it slowly into place. When you've got the assembly loop, now I've got almost all the way in. I'm going to loop the rear bearing surface some more. The center bearing areas and also the other two just a bit. So we have plenty of lubrication coming in here. Now I'm going to very carefully do some tapping on a rubber mallet. You do not want to hit this with a hammer. I'm going to get myself a wrench so I can turn it.
Now that we have our camshaft in position, we're going to rotate the engine so we can put our valves back into it. As you can see, we've already installed all the valves. Either in both places or one or the other, the description or the upper right hand corner, there's going to be a link to a supercharged engine video where you can see how to install the valves. They are installed exactly the same in both engines, so there's no reason to show that here. You can watch that video and see how that's done. I just wanted you to see that they're all in here. Looking at the back of the engine here, you'll notice this is the back of where the camshaft goes. We need to put in an inch and a half freeze plug here. You'll notice that there's some oil I'm pointing at. That's from the install of the camshaft. We're going to clean that off with prep all and a paper towel and get it perfectly clean before we install the inch and a half freeze plug. There's your can of prep all. Product I use clean off oil, grease, wax, etc. And as you can see, we've already done that over there where we're going to put the plug in. They're also called expansion plugs. The purpose being that they exist in places like this spot where you've got to be able to machine something. They also exist in places where they had to get things out when they're coring the engine during actual production and casting. Theoretically, they may, as I said, be called freeze plugs because they might allow the expansion of water and save the block. Usually doesn't work that way though. You can see the freeze plug's been set into place and it has JB Weld, that's what the gray stuff is you see on it, all the way around the edge. The reason I would do that is because it's an old block and you can have minor pitting and that's a solution for the minor pitting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set it in place. As you saw, I used two ball peen hammers at first to set this. You don't use a standard hammer, you need a ball peen when you're doing it. Now I've switched to a punch and a large ball peen so we can get the center down more, which causes the expansion plug to bend down in the center and push out on the sides. As a final set, I used the punch you saw me use and this five pound sledgehammer with a couple of wraps in the center to finally set the thing in place so I know that it's tight and not going to come out at all. If you were going to remove it, you punch a hole in the center of it and you pry it out using a long pry bar or screwdriver. Now we're going to clean it off utilizing a small amount of lacquer thinner on our paper towel and just clean off the surface. Don't try to clean the edges perfectly. You want those to seal. Here you're looking at the driver's side of the engine and you can see the number 612682. That's 612682. Stamped right there. That's the engine number for this Graham engine. Now I'll show you where that is relative to the front of the engine. There you can see where it is relative to the front of the engine. Here we are on the passenger rear floor. You can see it's 612682 just as we showed you on the engine. Meaning we have a matching numbers. Oh. Here you see the driver's side of the engine. We've got one expansion plug here, one here, one yet to put in here. There's one more of these around the back. All four of these are inch and an eighth. 
they install exactly like the other expansion plug did so we're going to finish that up off camera right here in the top center of the engine see there's a hole and that hole goes all the way through this plug shouldn't be a hole here if you were looking through the other side of the engine you could see light through this what this is is this is a water jacket area between the number three and number four exhaust ports. Had this engine been run any length of time prior to it being disassembled and cleaned and we're going through it and doing it properly, it would have sprung a leak here and probably with disastrous consequences because this is plain rusted through. There wouldn't be hardly anything there for that to have come like this through cleaning. So now we're going to have to pop it out and we're going to have to get a new one. We'll use a awl here and our ball peen to at least get a hole started. And see how much it'll come out. We may have to work on it a bit. As you can see, this is all rusted. That's not good. It's going to have to come out of there. So I'm going to get a different tool and start working it out. See if we can get in there with a screwdriver right now. Might not be able to. little bit of it up. More effort. Alright, here we switch to an easy out. Let's see if we can get it out with that. Each time I'm getting further, but I'm not getting it out yet. Charge your easy out. As you can see, now I'm not getting all the edges, but it's coming out bit by bit. Back with the awl here. Doing pretty recalcitrant. Well, you can see we got it out of the hole. It just turned out we needed a little more push and it popped right out. So now we're going to have to get a new plug and put in that spot. All right, we're looking at the underside of the engine, obviously. We have four main bearings. If you watch the supercharger overhaul, you'll find that I talk about a main bearing set from a Kaiser 226. And there are differences between that main bearing set, the Graham main bearing set, and this main bearing set. This is a main bearing set that would fit a Continental Industrial engine. Bearings are 10 under based on what we had our crank turned to. But just as there was a problem with the Kaiser set that I give you that information in the supercharged overhaul video, which we will either link to in the description or up in the upper right hand corner. There's a problem with this Continental set. Over here on the front end, we have a lip. That lip can't be there. Now whether or not you can see it in the video real well or not, that's causing the bearing to be too far forward and not seat completely on the saddle like it's supposed to, because we got too much tension at this point. This is not supposed to be on the Graham set, so it's going to have to be modified. Solution is take this to a stationary belt sander and sand off this lip bit by bit till it's gone. Now it's going to get hot when you're holding it, and what you're going to do is dip it into cold water, dry it off, continue on, and you're going to do that until you remove this particular portion of the bearing because you cannot have the lip and install that into the engine. So I'm going to go have to modify that before we can go through and install this set properly. The second third and fourth ones are all set in place their matchings are along here but our front sets wrong in the continental set so we've got to make that modification and remove the lip 
here you can see we have all four of the main bearings set in place, the back three rough fast in the front one we've had fast and unfastened a couple times, making sure everything's just right. You notice we did take and sand off the front portion of those bearings and now sit centered in the saddle. The next time we come through in our next video, we're going to be showing how to fit the crankshaft, the plastic gauge, and continue the assembly of this engine. Hopefully you'll join us for the future one.